Hello everyone, welcome to another Diamond Fire tutorial. Today we are going to learn how to make a parkour with checkpoints. To start, I have built this parkour. These gold blocks will be the checkpoints. Whenever a player presses shift to sneak on one of these gold blocks, it will save their current location as a checkpoint. And then we're going to make it so that when the player presses F to swap hands, they will be teleported back to their checkpoint. So if they fall off the parkour, all they got to do is press F and they'll be teleported back to their checkpoint. Let's write some code for the checkpoints. To start, we're going to use a player event and we are going to use movement events, player sneak event to detect when the player presses shift to sneak. Now we only want the checkpoint functionality to happen when they sneak on a gold block. So we will use the if player block to detect if they're standing on a gold block when they press sneak. To do that, we're going to use locational conditions and is standing on block. So if the player is standing on a gold block, we will do the checkpoint behavior. We're gonna grab a gold block and we're going to put it in the chest like so. And now for the fun part. We're going to use variables to save the player's current location as a checkpoint. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of a variable, you can think of it a bit like a box with a label on it. I could name the label whatever I want, such as checkpoint, and I could put whatever I want in the box, such as the number four, the text hello, or the location of a player. So to set variables on Diamond Fire, we use the set variable block. I'm going to put one of these down in between these piston brackets. And you can see that the set variable block already has this equals operation set. This is the simplest set variable operation. It basically just says we're going to set some variable to some value. There are many more complicated things that you can do with variables, but this is all we'll need for this checkpoint system. Now it's time to grab a variable. So we are going to open our values menu and we're going to get a variable item that is the magma cream. We're going to put that in our hotbar and we're going to give this variable a name. Now we could just name this variable checkpoint, but we want each player to have their own checkpoint. So we are going to use a special code to put the player's name into the variable. This code is percent default. The default means that it is the player who activated this event. In this case, the player who pressed sneak. We're also going to put checkpoint to denote that this is the checkpoint variable. So when we press enter here, you can see that we have our default checkpoint variable. You can see that it says game. This is the scope of the variable. A game variable disappears when all the players leave the plot. If we press shift and right click, you can see that the scope has been changed to save, meaning that this variable will be saved. So if a player leaves the plot and comes back later, they will still have their checkpoint. Now we're going to put this in the chest above the set variable block. It is important that we put our variable in the first slot of the chest. Now we want to get the player's current location to save the checkpoint. We're going to open up our values menu again, and we're going to grab a game value. Game values allow you to get information about what's happening in a game. For example, you could get the current number of players in the game, or the current health of a certain entity. In this case, we want to get the current location of the player. We're going to put this in our inventory and we are going to right click and we're going to choose locational values. We're then going to choose location and this will grab the player's location. You can see now that we have that under target, you can see that it says default. That's the same default player that I mentioned earlier when we were doing percent default in the variable. All we have to do now is drop this game value in the chest next to our variable and it will set the player's checkpoint to their current location. Now this is all the code we need to set the checkpoints, but I'm going to add one extra code block here, a player action, to send the player a message whenever they save their checkpoint. To do that, we go to communication and send message here. And we're going to go to our values menu again and grab a text item to send the player some text in chat. We're going to hold this and let's call it checkpoint saved. And now we put this in the chest. And now whenever the player sneaks on a gold block, it will save their checkpoint and it will let them know that they have saved a checkpoint. Now let's make it so that the player can return to their checkpoint by pressing F. 
we're going to place another player event and we are going to choose click events and we're going to choose the player swap hands event. Generally in the default controls, this is the F key. Now we're going to use a player action to teleport the player to their checkpoint location. Teleport is under the movement category. You can see it right here. And in this chest, normally we would put a location item, but we are going to put the variable that we used earlier. So I'm going to grab a copy of this and put it in the chest like so. And that is all. With very few code blocks, we have created a working checkpoint system. Let's test it out. I'm going to sneak on this gold block. You can see that my checkpoint has been saved. And if I fall off and press F, I am teleported right back to my saved location. If I save a new checkpoint like this, you can see that the new checkpoint is saved as well. And that is how you create a parkour with checkpoints in Diamond Fire. Thanks for watching.